stay tuned to watch me turn this into and turned it into this pretty rainbow dresser. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. Okay, I made a stop at Dollar Tree the other day and I picked up this dollhouse size dresser and I thought it would be fun to do a furniture flip on it today and I've got something in mind so let's get it unwrapped and see how it looks and we'll see if it's going to work. Just have to decide if I want to change. I think I'm going to actually leave it the way it is. I've got an idea for this bottom part. Maybe it will work. This one's in pretty good shape. It's got a little bit of glue on the back but that came off really easily. It's put together fairly well. I think I am going to off camera see if I can get these little knobs off. If I can, I'll at least get started because uh, I want to hit them with the heat gun and then try to pull them out with my pliers. Usually works the best. So let me get that prep work done off camera and then I'll be back and we will start making this into something really fun. All right, these are coming out really easily, these little knobs, so I thought I'd show you on camera one of them, and then I'll go back to getting the rest of them out. So I've got my heat gun out, and I'm just turning it on, and holding it fairly close to the wood. I don't care if I scorch the wood a little bit. That's fine. Uh, I'm more interested in getting that glue soft. And then immediately take your pliers, and just kind of twist and they just come out if they don't come out at first put the heat gun on it again and you can they'll come off really easily at least they are on this one so I'm gonna go back get the rest of these off and then I'll be back all right I got the handles off and this needs a little bit of sanding so I've got my sandpaper here and this is just a piece of 80 grit this is what I could find Sand across. I'm going to sand up and down in these areas. And rather than making you watch me sand the entire thing, I am going to turn the camera off, get this all sanded down, then I'm going to wipe it with a paper towel. And when I get that done, I'll come back and we'll put our first coat of paint on. All right, I sanded this down. I sanded in all the everywhere that I felt it needed it. I used the sandpaper to kind of make these lines between the drawers, the fake drawers, look a little more prominent. I uh, sanded off the bumps around the knobs, sanded all these rough areas, and then I wiped it off with a paper towel just to get off the majority of the dust that's created from sanding. Now I've got some white paint here, some of the white apple barrel paint that Plaid sent to me. Uh, and I've got one of the brushes they sent. And I am going to give this a good coat of white paint on the front, the top, and the sides. I'm not going to paint the bottom. I'm not going to paint the back. And I'm probably going to come back with something to lift the paint out of those holes. I should have brought a cotton swab with me, and I forgot to grab that. Um, but I'm going to give this probably two coats of white paint. Part of this will remain white when we're done, which will probably need some touch-ups. And part of it, we are going to be painting and making it look fun. Um, but I want a good white base to work on. This will do a couple of things. It gives us a nice clean base that's nice and consistent. It also seals the wood so if so the wood won't soak up all our paint when we're trying to do our fun part and waste a lot of paint later. Um, I want to be able to blend colors on the front of this and I don't want the uh, paint to be soaking in while I'm trying to do that. If some paint gets onto the back that's all right. I'm just not going to paint it, um, make it be painted. It's going to be relatively free of paint on the back. But I'm also not going to worry if I do 
get a little bit over there. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to finish painting this white. I'm going to wrap up my paintbrush in a wet wipe so that it will stay nice for the for today while I'm painting the white paint. If I need to, I'll, which I'm sure I will, I'll give this a second coat, possibly a third coat. We'll see how it goes. Sometimes this really cheap wood that these are made out of soaks up a lot of the initial paint. So when this has a good coat of white paint that's nice and consistent and looks good, I'll come back and we'll move on to the fun part. All right, this is after three coats of the white, and I'm satisfied that this is a good co good coverage. It's gonna be a good base for the drawers. It's also gonna be just a good finish for the sides. The next step I'm doing is semi-optional. I'm gonna call it semi-optional. I am going to coat the entire cabinet with matte Mod Podge before I take do another step. And that's going to to what it's going to do, it's going to give me a little bit of an insurance policy. I'm hoping that that way, if I do make a mistake as far as putting on these colors on the drawers, if I have sealed the paint with the matte Mod Podge, in theory, it will be easier to clean up than if I am going directly over my white paint. Because remember, craft paint is, it's a matte finish, it's somewhat porous, and a lot of times it stains really badly if you get paint onto it. So my feeling is if I, I'm trying to do this without getting fingerprints all over it, if I coat this with the matte Mod Podge, it'll still be very paintable but it'll give me a few seconds to get that paint wiped off if I slip. So I'm gonna let this dry, and when this is dry, we can go on and start painting our drawers and making this a really fun dresser. All right, there's been a couple of changes since the last clip on the video, and that's because I changed my mind about something. I actually painted and glued all the knobs back in. Now, I would still take them out to sand this because it's much easier to get a good sanding job done, but I think I would have glued them back in before I painted had I thought ahead. Initially, I was going to paint these silver because I'd seen a couple of pictures of rainbow dressers that I really liked that had silver knobs. And then I got to thinking, I think they'll look better painted to match their drawers. So I want them in place. Um, so those are, I glued them in off camera because it was just easier. Now one of them I noticed as I was taking it out and putting it back in, this one has was broken off and did not match the rest. So I put it in the center top. Hopefully it will kind of blend in that way. So we're going to paint the top. Actually, we're going to paint the top, this drawer, this drawer, and this drawer. So I'm going to have to make sure I get the right colors because we're going to go in rainbow order across and then down. I'm, we've got six drawers, so I'm using six colors. Let's go ahead and look at the colors first. Um, most of these are from plaid. I think the only one that's not is my purple. So I have, for red, I have apple red from Apple Barrel. For orange, I have our vivid orange that we've used a lot for our um, Halloween projects. For yellow, I have a ceramic coat in crocus yellow. Green, I have bright green, which you've also used a lot on the channel. Blue, I have Apple Barrel Bright Blue. And for the purple, there was no good dark purple, so I decided to go through my stash and I found Crocus from uh, Anita's. So let's see, I'm going to do the blue one, I'm going to do the red and the orange. That way I can do three and then I can come back and do some more later. So let's go ahead. I won't make you watch me do all of them, but I will, we'll go through a couple. So I've got the red, I've got some brushes here. I'm picked up just small brushes. And remember we did seal this, so it will be a little bit more cleanable if I do make a mistake. I did tape the top and the bottom, 
And I'm going to try to not get down on the sides. I will probably need two coats to cover. Some of these colors are somewhat translucent. They're probably semi-translucent, semi-opaque colors. Um, this is not a great brush, but I don't have enough of the brushes from Plaid. They're the right size and shape. I'm going to attempt not to get my hair in the picture today. It always makes me really aggravated when I'm going through the video clips and I see that my hair is sticking into the picture. Now, if I get too much down in the, um, in the area between the drawers, I can always go back with more white and touch that up. Put off to the side. This was this one will definitely need two coats. Let's see how the orange looks. These three top drawers are going to be the most difficult to get painted because they are the smallest. And with that one in the middle, it's going to be a little more interesting. But it's just paint, so we can we can always fix it. It's paint, and the paint under it is sealed, so it's always fixable. So don't I forgot to do the knob. After I put the knob back in there to paint it, I didn't paint it. That's better. Swabs here. There. Now let's get this one put away. Let's do the blue and then I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll get the second coat on these when they're dry. I will wrap up these brushes in a wet wipe to keep them nice and soft and ready to use for the next the next time. That's a hint I use a lot on this channel. I learned it from an interview done with Tim Holtz that was on, I forget whose channel it was on, but he was talking about that's a good way to, to work with your paint is to um, wrap your paintbrush in a wet wipe between uses and then it will stay fresh all day long, especially when you're going back and forth between having to do multiple coats of paint on your project. So I am going to turn the camera off now. I will go ahead and finish this blue up. I'll get a second, possibly third coat on some of these depending on how well the coverage is. And when that's done, I'll come back and we'll start on our next colors. So how many of you caught the big goof I made in the last clip? This is supposed to be yellow, not orange. But on the bright side, I used a wet wipe and I wiped that damp paint right off and it barely shows. So let's try this again with the correct color. So this one is yellow. That's going to be better. I was looking at this and I thought, thinking, there's something wrong with my rainbow. Duh. All right, now I'll let this dry, and that color covered much better. I'll let this dry. I'll get the second coat on everything in the right spots, and then I'll be back and we can move on. All right, so those all have two coats of paint and they're dry. So let's go on to the next colors and let's see if I can put them all in the right spots this time. But on the bright side, I got to show you that that really cleaned up easily. I mean, that was super easy. I just hit it with a wet wipe and I was able to wipe that off. I'll talk a little more about that over on the blog post. But let's get this orange in here. Yeah, this is the, the knob that was broken when I went to take it off. But that's to be expected on the Dollar Tree stuff. 
And this orange is going to take a couple of coats. So I'm going to do. If I wasn't trying to do this where you guys can see it, I could, I would be turning it a little more. The better way to do this is like this and work towards the center, but that's one disadvantage with the knob in the way. Okay, I'm going to have to work with this. That color is turning out a mess, but I will get it evened out off camera. I think I'm not going to do the green until off camera after the orange dries, but let's go ahead and get the purple on the bottom one. And then off camera, I'll get the second coats on both of these colors, and I'll do two coats of green on that middle one, so that then when I come back, we will I'll probably start touching up the white also around these, but between wiping off paint and then also just hitting the um, the crevices there between the drawers with uh, some white paint on a, either on a thin brush or on um, with a paint pen I haven't decided but we will get this all finished and then we'll do a special I want to do something on the bottom edge that's why I left that um, rim on the bottom so let's let me get this finished up, and when we're ready to move on, I'll be back and we'll finish up. All right, the green is painted and dried, and I experimented up here a little bit to neaten up my lines. And what I found worked the best for me was a small dotting tool that is just a little bit smaller than this gap. And what I'm doing, and you might need two coats. I did do two coats. I think I'm going to do maybe even a third one later. Have something to wipe your fingers on because, and I just flip this over. I'm running dip the ball tool or dotting tool into paint and then wipe with your finger. If you get white on the drawer fronts, you can easily touch it up, but it should wipe away with your fingertip pretty well. And I find this to be a lot more effective for getting in these spots than a brush. With a brush, I generally make a huge mess. With something like a dotting tool, I can get a nice line and have it look pretty good pretty easily. So I am going to do one more here. And then I'm going to let this paint dry. When this is dry, I'll decide if I need to add another coat. Um, once it dries, sometimes you can see through a little bit. But I'll do the, all that off camera. Once the white paint in this is all dry, we can go ahead and put our clear finish on. Oh, we got one more step to do. Actually, let me get set up to do my final thing I wanted to do. We're going to do one more step before I um, stop. So let me go get a few things and I'll be right back. All right, I thought it would be fun to line this bottom with some brushed metallic in silver. Um, it's kind of a fun little and it won't show a lot. I don't want it to show a whole lot. I just want just a little bit out. This is one of, <coughs> one of those things where people will have to look closely to really know what they're seeing. And you can definitely leave this step off. I just, I'm kind of going to refer to this as the silver lining in our cloud that our rainbow's in. So there we go. 
So I'm going to let this stuff dry. I might touch up that white, we'll see. And when this is all dry, we'll come back and put a clear finish on and see how this looks. All right, the paint is, I think, dry. So I am going to coat it with a coat of satin Mod Podge. I am gonna put just a little bit out on this container lid and work from there just in case some of that paint isn't completely dry. And if I wasn't doing the video, I would probably work on this a couple more times and get more of that paint covered between the drawers, but I need to get done. I'm kind of running late, as seems to be the norm. I'm running late. I need to get the video done so you guys will have it on Sunday morning. So I am going to go ahead and leave this the way it is. Um, it's fine, but you get the idea of how to do this. So I'm just gonna coat the entire part of the dresser that we painted. I'm gonna coat it with Mod Podge, let that dry, and then we'll come back and we'll look and see how this looks. And I'll give you an angle so you can see how it looks standing next, with a doll standing next to it. So I'll be, dry, I'll be back when this is dry. All right, there is our dresser all finished with Mrs. Doll standing next to it. I wish I would have been a little neater with the green paint than I was. It's a little sloppy, but uh, nothing that you guys can't do when you're doing yours not on camera, which always adds an extra element of difficulty. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure and check the blog post. I'll have some photos over there. I'll have a list of the color, exact colors of paint I used, although you could use any rainbow colors on your dresser. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What kinds of things would you like to see in future videos? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.